For another design, we will need a white background, which I prepared in advance. And also, it is Christmas, so we need to add some bling, of course. I don't think it's possible without it. So I have this mix of the rhinestones. There are different colors and different sizes of them. Also, we will need something silver or gold, gel or gel polish. You can actually use acrylic as well. So I have this secret silver gel. And okay, I will put the acrylic away now. Also, we will need a red. I think red, green, and gold and silver are the colors that you will definitely need a lot during the Christmas. So I will apply a little red on the paper. And also we will need a little brown, dark brown color, and a little black. So for thin lines, my favorite black is Go Color by NSI because of the consistency. It's really thick, but I will not need much. Actually, I took too much here also just to show you. But for this design, you will use a tiny amounts of the product. So I mean the cost, like self cost of these designs is pretty low. It's all about the time and the professionalism you're putting into it. And we will need a brush. I'm using this one, it's number two. It's actually for acrylic paints, but I also like to use it for gel. It's natural Kalinsky, it's number two, or you can use number one or one and a half as well. Um, so first we need to create, and this will be a Christmas ball, and it's not as complicated as it may look. So I will first mix this gel a little. As, as the time passes, the colored gels, the pigments can separate from the gel itself. So you just need to mix it so it can work better. Now, if you're not sure with where the center is, you can just make a dot and look from a distance to make sure it is actual center. And then we can need to create a circle. And it doesn't have to be like perfectly symmetrical circle. And depending on the size of the nail, it can be bigger or smaller. But it's silver and actually any glitter tones, they're the easiest to work with. So I think that's enough. Yes. Okay, now we will cure it, but we don't need to fully cure it. I will simply freeze cure it in like 10 seconds. And while it is curing, I will clean my brush. Let me show you how I clean it. I simply use the dry napkin to clean it, or the best way to clean it, especially from the dark colors, is to use clean base coat and simply like wash it in a base coat. Just imagine it's a water. It's the same as cleaning acrylic paint brushes in the water, but with gel brushes, clear, clear base coat is the best thing for cleaning them. Okay, our ball is half cured, and then we will do a bow. I will use red gel polish and make the dot in the center. And for this design, believe it or not, also you don't need to do everything perfectly symmetrical, because in the real life, if you look at the bows, they are not actually like, you know, some geometrical figure. They can be a little folded somewhere. So we first we do one side and then we do the other. So this design is also optional. If you don't want to do this huge bow, you can simply draw, you know, like a thread, which is holding the bowl. It's optional. Okay. And then I will do a couple of ribbons, which are hanging, hanging from the top. And I know it looks a little weird now because it's all in one color now, but then when we will add a couple shades, 
you will see that it's actually all in the right place. Okay, now we also can cure it. Well, let's do like 30 seconds. Once again, we don't need to have full cure, but we need to cure a little bit more than 10 seconds because now I will add shades on top of the bow and it needs to be a little cured. Okay, uh, now we actually, for the um, shadows, it is better to use dark red, but I, believe it or not, I have 200 colors, but I don't have dark red that I want. <laughs> That's why we can make it. I have a dark brown, so I will add a little bit of red there. And this is how I will get this color. And I recommend you to do it too. You don't really need to have all colors in the world, but if you know how to mix them, it can help you. And then I will add shades. So first one we will add here. Oh, and also I forgot for another tip. So it is easier to add shades if you will also add to the color a small drop of the top coat. What it will do, it will water the color, so it will be not as intense, it will be a little transparent. And that's actually what we need to create a nice shades. Okay, so I add one shade here, another one on the other side. And what's great about painting with gels or gel polishes is, even if you made some mistake, you can always fix it because it will not dry until you put it in the lamp. Then I will take, add a couple shades here and make these sections of the bow separated and add some here. And you see it's like adding a little volume. It's actually becoming more alive now. But once again, if you don't want to do that, you can skip this step it will still look nice. Then we cure and then we can add a little more brown to this mixture and add a darker shadow and shades so it will become actually even more alive and 3D. So I'm uh, doing the same, just adding more shades but as the color is darker now it's adding even more volume to it. And I recommend you to always add a little top coat because the colors will become more transparent and it will be easier for you to blend them, to stretch them. And then again, I first cure it. And the last step will be adding accents with the black. Uh, the black, as you probably noticed, you see it has much thicker consistency. It's what people usually call it's like gel paint. And uh, NSI Gold Color is actually, um, it's like a no tack free gel top coat. And I really like the consistency and intensity of the color. And even though it was designed to cover the nail with a black color, I really like it for the designs. It's really easy to create extremely thin lines. Sometimes people are struggling with creating thin lines and Sometimes it's not only about their hands, it's about the product. I mean, if it's too thin, it, it's just really hard to make a thin line. So you, you still can do that, but it's more tricky. So I also recommend you to use a thicker consistency gel or gel polishes, so it will be easier for, for you to do thin lines. And for the small accents, I will use the smaller brush now. It is number one, and I think I didn't clean it very good from my previous designs. Okay, now it's cleaned. And the bow is cured. And we can add our last accents. And I have glitter all over my brushes and all over everything. Well, it happens when we're doing Christmas designs. And I will just add a small accents. And it's really up to you, like depending on your style, but I personally, I don't like when, you know, the whole design is outlined. I think it looks, I don't know, like more like a cartoon. 
And usually when you look at the real objects, also there's no actual black lines. So it is better just to add a couple accents, like let's say if you didn't like this ending of the ribbons, you can fix them and make them sharper, but don't outline like the whole piece. Only the accents you want to add. And also we can add the actual thing where the, our Christmas bowl is hanging. A small thread and cure it. And now we need to fully cure it because after we will seal it. And this was the longest part of our design because after that we only need to add some decoration and it will be go faster. So we will need the rhinestones. If you don't have rhinestones for some reason, you can actually use different decals. Also, we will need a thick consistency clear builder gel. I will be using Entity 1. Also, NSI, they have NSI Apex Builder, which is good for this. So any kind of gel that is so thick that it just stays bumpy in the jar, that kind of thickness we're looking for. And also we will need something to pick up our rhinestones. I will use the wax pencil today, but normally I, I like to use a pickup tool. Now we need to seal it with a top coat and it is better to use a no cleanse top coat. And I will cover the whole tip from the top to the bottom. And the background for the Christmas bowl can be golden, it can be any glitter color that you like, not necessarily the silver. Okay, now let's start to decorate it. And as I showed you, I have a mix of our different colors and sizes, and we can use them all. I mean, you can use uh, different colors and actually when you have all colors, it's really hard to decide. So I will take one big, one will be blue, then one will be red. I don't know what I, okay, let's add the turquoise. I mean, it looks so much better when you will use different sizes. And please don't try to make them, you know, lay out in a perfect circle, perfectly symmetrical. It will not look as nice. Okay. I think now we need something lighter, probably. No, we already have red. Okay. Now white. So I said that we can add any colors and then I end up choosing every single color. I don't know, I just want to make it, you know, more colorful to show you how it really shines when it's all in, in the different colors. And also you don't need to fill the whole surface, it's fine if you will leave some gaps in between because we have silver underneath and it will still look good. And, okay, let's add the green one. I just wanted to find this one and finally I found it. Um, and before you cure it, you can move them around if you feel like doing that. And then we cure it. We have a gel top coat already, so our design will be shiny and tech free. And also we will secure the rhinestones. And if you want to stop at this point, you can. But I will show you something cool just in a moment when we will fully cure it. We will need a thick consistency clear gel. It is important. And also I will use the same natural brush number two. And as you probably know, that usually we don't seal rhinestones. I, actually, I even told you that on my bling webinar that we're not supposed to cover rhinestones because they won't be as shiny. But for this design, we're looking for a little bit different look and you will see what will happen in a moment. It is cured and then the last step is making this ball actually look like a ball. 
make sure that your brush is clean because if something will go inside it will not be as clear anymore and we need to take a relatively large amount of the gel and carefully cover the surface where we have rhinestones and this clear gel will actually work like a lens so the rhinestone will shine in a different way I mean um, Actually, if you have Aurora uh, rhinestones or, you know, any kind of chameleon rhinestones that shine in different colors, it will also look really good. Now we need to wait a couple seconds until it sets and cure. And this is it. Then we will need to seal it, this part with a top coat, and it will be finished. So while we're waiting, let me show you I have a finished the same finish design right here so this is how it looks and depending on the size of your client's nails you can make this ball smaller and actually you can even take one one rhinestone and cover it with a gel and it will also look like a small uh, Christmas ball now let me give you some examples of the designs we're not going uh, to do today but just to give you the idea so, um, for example, this one, those are not rhinestones, there are like flat circles that we have underneath and once you seal them with a the gel, it, they look a little bit alike. And also this is the Christmas tree and here I covered every single circle and you see they also look like beads. If you do the same to the rhinestones, they will also look like a Christmas balls. So now we only need to seal this part with the uh, tag-free top coat and design will be ready.